The charity shield opening to the season between the cup holders and the champions saw South Melbourne 2-1 winners over Sydney Olympic, but in need of some charity of its own. With a host of injuries to start the season, coach Puskas consoled himself with the knowledge that things could only get better. A fiery round one saw Arpia come back to draw at home, having been two down to St George with six minutes to go. Gus Serro became the season's first sending off in Melita's nil-all draw with new chums Wollongong Macedonia. The fight between South Melbourne and Melbourne Croatia to be Victoria's number one club began with a one-all draw. Preston's Warren Spink hit the 91 season's first hat-trick against Wollongong City. And Heidelberg made a triumphant return to the National League, beating Sunshine 3-1 to go top of the table. Sunshine was firmly cemented on the bottom of the ladder in round two by Marconi. In a 6-1 win, last season's top scorer David Seal snared his first hat-trick for his new club. Wollongong City unveiled its new signing, former Socceroo skipper Charlie Yankos, but in a gale-force wind, could only share the points with Sydney Olympic. Tony Krislovich scored twice for St George against Preston Macedonia, but with the scores level, Andy Harper was presented with a gift winner. In his 301st NSL game, Theo Salamides ended Sydney Croatia's hoodoo over Melbourne Croatia to take Melbourne to the top of the table and make it a happy home debut for new coach Ante Grigic. Wherever Sunshine was playing, goals were sure to follow. And in round three, Georgie took the lead three times in the hard-fought derby against Melbourne, Croatia, without getting a point. Goalkeeper Sean Keogh was having a tough start to the season, and Francis Awaratiki clinched it for the competition leaders. Adelaide City was getting off to its customary slow start. It went down 3-1 in the wet to second place South Melbourne. Andrew Callanan was one of three red cards for the weekend, but teammate Greg Brown got Parramatta Melita a late equaliser against Sydney, Croatia. After nine months out with a knee injury, Slatko Nostevsky was back as sub for Marconi against Preston. His successor David Seal went to the top of the scorer's table and John Markovsky thumped his first goal for his new club in a convincing 2-0 win. Heidelberg took Preston's place in the five, beating Wollongong City 2-1. Englishman Paul Lewis bidding Australian soccer a stylish farewell. Sunshine Games were producing an average of six goals. Its first win was in the bottom of the table clash with Molita Eagles. Wollongong Macedonia lost its unbeaten league record in round five. A Gordon Scott cracker was one of the goals which took Sydney Croatia into fifth spot. Wollongong City fared better. In a game with six yellow cards, Wolves, who hadn't scored and had conceded 12 in three games with Marconi, won 2-1. St George drew with Heidelberg, but lost skipper Andy Kotzka with a broken leg. Preston posted its biggest win for a decade when it thumped league leaders Melbourne Croatia 6-1. Warren Spink got his second hat-trick of the season after young Socceroo Chris Trajanovski had scored twice. And even though South Melbourne went top in again beating Sydney Olympic, Paul Trimboli knew the season was but young. Well, I mean, at this stage we're just looking to make the top five, I think, like all teams. And then really, once you get in the top five, anything can happen, as showed last year. I mean, Sydney Olympic came from nowhere and did it, so I think our first priority is to just stay in that top five. The St George apprentices got the thrill of a lifetime before the Marconi game, but unfortunately Pelé's presence didn't inspire the seniors. David Lowe scored two beauties in Marconi's 3-0 win, which took it into second place. In a controversial game at Brandon Park, Charlie Yankos scored from an indirect free kick inside the six-yard box in beating Melbourne Croatia and moving Wollongong City into the five. And after a superb Tony Bitmar opener, Adelaide City got its first win, sending a forlorn Manfred Schaefer's Arpia to the bottom. Still looking for its first NSL win, Wollongong Macedonia was instead Arpia's passport off the bottom in round seven. Sub Klaus Ocon scored with his first touch, or at least his second, to seal the Leichhardt club's second win of the season. Both Adelaide City and Preston Macedonia had a player sent off in a nil-all draw. Sergio Melter's red card from referee McCrow for dissent, one of the most controversial of the season. On the verge of a crushing home loss, South Melbourne stayed a point clear on top after Sunshine squandered a 3-1 lead. Kim Taliadoras netted the winner in a seven-goal thriller. 
In contrast, champion Sydney Olympics goal tally was equal lowest in the league. Robbie Ironside scored only their fifth to draw with Sydney Croatia, and he had an answer for the team's poor strike rate. We've played five games so far, and man of the match has been a keeper in each game, so, I mean, the keepers can't do anything wrong against us. It was Olympic keeper Clint Gosling who had the most work to do in the grand final replay. Marconi gained some revenge for that loss, with John Markovsky rounding off a 4-1 win which moved Marconi to top of the table. Things were starting to look up for Arpia as it inflicted South Melbourne's first loss of the season. Paul McFadden's goal after three minutes, the fastest so far. And in a spiteful match at the Olympic Village, Heidelberg drew 1-1 with Melbourne Croatia, whose Ante Grigic became the first coach of the season to get the boot. Stand-in at Melbourne, Croatia, Andrew Albert turned things around immediately with a 6-0 win over leaders Marconi. While Arpia's Rod Brown and Shane Clinch munched in the stands, another memorable debut came from Tony Krislovic. Signed from St George 24 hours earlier, he got both Sydney Croatia's goals in a 2-1 win, taking him to the top of the scorer's table. Heidelberg's George Slifkus got sent off for using his head unwisely against Melita, not so Greg Brown, who coolly took his time before finding the head of Marshall Sopa in a 4-0 romp. Melbourne Croatia keeper David Miller didn't pull his head in quickly enough. It was a change of fortune for Sydney Olympic, which drew after Melbourne Croatia had led 3-1. Two days after his 21st birthday, Michael Michaela Coppolis got the first of four goals in two games to tip Wollongong City out of the five and put South equal top with Marconi. The Fairfield club beat Melita 3-2. The winner came from the young Socceroo combination of Paul Ocon and David Seal. In round 11, Manus Lamond combined with Tony Krislovic to put Sydney Croatia into the top five. Krislovic completing his first hat-trick of the season against Wollongong City. Wollongong Macedonia broke through for its first NSL victory. Casey De Bruin having replaced John Fleming as coach. And on a sultry Adelaide night, the lights went out twice on the City Marconi game. Before Aurelio Vidmar got the winner, which allowed South Melbourne to take over top spot. With keeper Roberts a week later, Melbourne Croatia were again league leaders, beating Adelaide City 3-0 in its first game under Ken Warden. With John Filan depriving former teammate Tony Krislovic, and Matthew Bingley scoring a brave goal against Sydney Croatia, St George lifted itself off the bottom. And it wasn't a happy return for Abbas Saad. He was sent off in Sydney Olympics 1-0 loss to Melita Eagles in his first game back from Singapore. And in round 13, fifth place Sydney Croatia ended up sharing the points with Heidelberg after John Gibson had scored what would be the season's fastest goal after only 40 seconds. The 1990 half of the NSL's second summer season came to a close with South Melbourne wilting in the heat at Middle Park. Marconi ended South's 23 game unbeaten home run with a 3-0 walloping that had the fans asking coach Puskas if he could guarantee the Blues would play better in 1991. Paul Trimboli began the new year in fine style for South Melbourne, netting twice in a 3-0 win at Melbourne, Croatia. That tied the two Melbourne clubs at the top of the table with Marconi. Having been stretched off earlier in the season, St George's Andy Kotzka was sent off for a rugby tackle against Arpia, as the Saints were ripped apart 4-0. As one of three teams equal on points for fifth, round 15 saw Sydney Olympic move a game clear. A 2-0 win over top five rivals Wollongong City, Tony Bazzano conceding his first goals in the Wolves net, made it three wins in a row to the champions. And the gripping all-Croatia clash in Sydney produced seven goals, with Melbourne victorious despite another couple from the league's hotshot Tony Krislovic. Krislovic! Brilliant goal from Tony Krislovic. Telling Ford moves from the home team were rare. 
Preston Macedonia was shopping for two round 16 points against Heidelberg to stay in fourth place on the table. But it wasn't until Chris Trajanovski's 90th minute goal that the cash registers started ringing. South Melbourne's Paul Wade was in the wars for the umpteenth time of the season, but his blood loss didn't inspire his team as Adelaide City hit them 4-1 to leave Marconi and Melbourne Croatia equal on top of the table and City in sixth place, prompting this inquiry of Tony Vidmar. The question has to be asked after tonight, why can't Adelaide City do that every week? Oh, well, I ask myself the same question, I'm not too sure, it's just, it's just on the day. And uh, if we keep going on that, well, we'll be up there in the top five. It happened in round 17 against Sydney, Croatia, when one of the season's classiest additions to the league, Robert Shoboff, scored his first NSL goal. In a game where keeper Bobby Catlin was superb, Marconi went a point clear on top of the table. As Peter Catholis ended an unbeaten 10-month home run for Preston. David Ratcliffe's Wollongong City came back into finals contention. Debutant Sasha Domofsky making it 3-0 against Heidelberg. While Wollongong Macedonia stayed firmly on the bottom in the season's highest scoring game. 7-3 equaled South Melbourne's club record. Marshall Soper, with some help from the Sunshine defenders, put the final nails in George Cross coach Ernie Merrick's coffin. Parramatta Melita away winners 2-1. Not even the heroics of Sydney Croatia captain Tony Franken could save coach Tony Vrezina's job. In round 18, Wollongong Macedonia's second win of the season meant Vrezina was on his way. A 91st minute winner from Melbourne Croatia's skipper Josip Biskic dumped Preston Macedonia out of the five for the first time since round five. Ken Warden thought it was the best game he'd seen in Australia, but he was still homesick for Perth. Hi Eunice, thanks for the support. Only one team improved its position on the ladder in round 19. Strife-torn Sydney Croatia under stand-in coach Steve Watson. Croatia beat South Melbourne 2-1 at Middle Park for the club's first away win of the season and South's third loss in four games. After six losses in seven games, Tony Brezina began his job of rescuing Sunshine from relegation with a draw against second-last Wollongong Macedonia. Sydney Olympic scored its best win of the season against Heidelberg, with Singapore wintering strikers Alistair Edwards and Abbas Saad with a hat-trick getting the goals. After being second to Marconi for six weeks, Melbourne Croatia took over top spot outright by drawing 3-3 at St George. Coming back from 3-1 down, it was the Saints' sixth straight draw to go two points clear of relegation. Marconi lost for the first time since round 11 and to a team which hadn't beaten it since 1982, fourth bottom Heidelberg. In defender Steve Blair's 300th NSL game, South Melbourne showed signs of throwing off its poor form, downing Sunshine 1-0 to leave Georgie three points behind third last St George. Round 21 produced the no goal of the season. Referee Lorenz and linesman Benovic were the only ones at Melbourne, Croatia, who didn't see Terry Rosopoulos' pile driver cross the line for Heidelberg. To add insult to injury, Melbourne, Croatia got all the points. And that's a goal. In an ironic twist of fate, Sunshine coach Brezina made a happy 5-0 return to the club which had sacked him three weeks earlier. Led by a Derek Hunter hat-trick, George Cross's second away win of the season ended Sydney Croatia's two-game winning run at the finals. Despite the skills of Gus Serro, Molita looked to have lost its finals chance in round 22. Willie Hurd got Heidelberg's winner with his fifth goal in seven games. After Abbas Saad's unusual opener, defending champion Sydney Olympic went four points clear in fifth, disposing of Sunshine 3-0. At Brandon Park, the Wollongong derby produced four goals. City's opener from David Skeen was cancelled out by Slatko Nastevsky, who'd crossed from Marconi six weeks earlier. A 2-2 draw got Macedonia a point clear of relegation. Parramatta Melita renewed its push for the finals with a 2-1 win over the struggling Marconi. Lenny Vile scoring his first goals for the season.
His former club, Adelaide City, and striker Carl Viet were tuning up for the top five series with a 3-1 win over Heidelberg, who were just three points off the relegation zone. With coach Frank Arrock bound from the touchline, St George was hitting its straps in the nick of time. Second place South Melbourne was its round 24 victim, 3-2, Andy Harper scoring his 11th of the season. Used to conceding late goals itself, Preston Macedonia's 91st minute winner from Oscar Crino, his first NSL goal since 1989, all but condemned Sunshine to relegation. And it was a round for passionate victory celebrations by both Sydney, Croatia and Heidelberg United. Round 25 produced 32 goals, the most for the season. Nine of them came at Melbourne, Croatia, six of those to one man, Ivan Kelic. He equaled the NSL single game record in confirming Croatia as minor premiers and condemning Wollongong Macedonia to the wooden spoon. Kelic's season's tally was 17, equal with Tony Krislovic. With Sydney Olympic held to a draw by Preston, Melita moved to within two points of the finals, disposing of the inform Adelaide City 3-1. In the final round, a Melita win over Sydney Olympic and the Eagles would take the defending champions' final berth. On 60 minutes, Alan Hunter rose high for his only goal of the season and Parramatta had done it. Victoria's first ever minor premier, Melbourne Croatia, were brought back to earth at Hindmarsh where Adelaide City hit it for six, Carl Viet netting four times. But even that couldn't prevent a Melbourne 1-2 as South Melbourne won its traditional clash with Heidelberg. Marconi's win against Wollongong Macedonia, its first since round 18, saw David Seal wrap up the goal-scoring award with a hat-trick for the second year in a row. His third hat-trick for Marconi made it 19 goals for the season. And the NSL Cup final rounded off the pre-top five action with Melita's Greg Brown almost predictably getting a late-minute winner to make Preston bridesmaids again and give Parramatta Melita its first NSL trophy. Surely, with only 30 seconds on the clock, that's got to be the winner. Season 1991 saw the emergence of the Victorian clubs as a dominant force in Australian soccer. For too long they played second fiddle to Sydney teams and for the first time in the history of the league, both grand finalists came from Melbourne. Minor premiers Melbourne Croatia made their first grand final appearance and were hot favourites against traditional rivals South Melbourne. A crowd of 23,000 filled picturesque Olympic Park and the scene was set for an epic encounter. A big psychological battle had been waged off the park in the media and when the whistle blew it was evident sparks would eventually fly. Back in by Salakis, and Villa gets down well. That will still a few butterflies for David Villa. He's a specialist with the long throw. Usually goes to the byline looking for a back header from Kelic or a Waratifi. Kelic is aimed for, good jump there from Blair. Talage can put it back in. Good pressure put on him. He's won the corner. Oh, beautiful skills to flip it through to Milosevic. Tackling back from Taliadoris, there's Coletta. Oh, if that one had stayed half a ball's width to the right, he was away and they wouldn't have caught him. There's South Melbourne shutting down Melbourne Croatia early on. And Awaratiki is down. And here it is, the emotion spilling over. Martin and Postacoglu go at it toe-to-toe. Awaratiki -toe. still down. I didn't see the incident. We well, might be able to have it for you off an isolated camera. And there it is. It looks like Mick Peterson there. I think Francis made it look pretty good. But uh, you can see the loving or hating with Francis. It's been one of the great additions to uh, the National League, though. Can't ignore him. Marth blasts. Yes! Andrew Marth, a cracking goal. Only his second of the season. What a time to score it. In the 26th minute, Melbourne, Croatia, won nothing up. It's a great strike by Marth, Peter, but what a soft goal. 
There's Kalaji going to throw again. Lay back by Piskic in a great strike. Actually took a deflection off the cluster probably by the look of it, wasn't it? A delighted pass. And I'm sure he was just speculating with the shot. Milosevic, little dummy for Kelic's strike. Comes back to Branko. Milosevic, high. Piskic, placed by Davidson. No, rather, Peterson. Davidson's available if he wants him. Uses to lay and start. Keeps it along the deck to Kelic. Clean off the line. Great effort down there from Durakovic. It was all over if that had gone in from Ivan Kelic. Croatia have dominated since then. Tremendous jump, even at this late stage, from Mark. Tripoli works himself into a bit of space. What a ball for Palazzini's! The recall! An equaliser from nowhere from South Melbourne. It was Paul Tripoli who conjured it up. A lack of concentration from Melbourne, Croatia. Puskas, the south coach, and we're heading for extra time. Joe Palazzini's. What an equaliser. After 30 minutes of extra time, it was still one all, and that meant a ruthless penalty shootout. Croatia could only score once, though. And it just goes to show, no matter how little time is left, it's always enough. Well, the peak of Villa's cap is taken out of the equation. He spins it around to face up to Paul Wade. It'll be interesting to see which side he goes as well because Wade he took one here a couple of weeks ago against Adelaide City. Wade's Normally good. goes to the right of the keeper. Went to his left side that time. McLaren got his fingertips to it. Too much power though from the captain. Joe Palazzini, his equaliser. Took this game to extra time, but he keeps South Melbourne in the hut. He can't! They missed three in a row! I don't believe it! The responsibility of winning the championship on the shoulders of Alan Davidson. I don't think you could ask for a better man in this situation. A cracker of a finish to the grand final. I think it's been a while since Stevie Blair's walked up to a penalty spot. Playing his 310th National League game. Ferentz is enjoying it, I think. First smile we've seen from him. I wonder how many of these he's been through in his life. Oh, cool. Hits the back stanchion. Very composed. Ivan Kelic. He's taken a long time to get there too. Scorer of 17 goals, two of them from the penalty spot during this season. That's it. South Melbourne, the National League champions for the second time. Get him in a big hand for the South Melbourne boys. Stand up, fellas, don't be shy. No takers. Uh, the South Melbourne players and officials.